Good afternoon, morning, <laughs> whatever it is, uh, wherever you are. This is Wally Todner from Xtuple, and I'm going to be doing a review of our quality module. Uh, so we've got a few customers uh, here joining us today. Uh, maybe some of you have seen it before or seen parts of it before, um, but I'll go through uh, the quality module, and I'll actually take it a, a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it um, maybe at a, a lighter weight way to use the quality, and then I'm going to use it in conjunction with workflow. Um, so there's a little bit more to it and a little bit more setup, maybe a little more powerful, actually. So uh, it's it it does a lot here, and there's a lot to it. And uh, depending on how you're going to use it, how you need it, what your quality processes are today, I think we've got a really, really good foundation for supporting that and keeping that information, that quality information about your products uh, in in the main database here. Um, that said, we're always interested in uh, customer feedback, and you know, as uh, we go through it, and as maybe you start to use it and deploy it, um, we're, we're certainly interested in your feedback, uh, and you know, hearing what what uh, potentially else the module might need to make your uh, operation more productive. Um, so just the way that, that it works and the way that it's structured, so everybody understands, um, it's a separate module. It's an add-on module. Um, so um, you're, if you're using the manufacturing edition or the uh, distribution edition or even post books, um, you can buy the module, the quality module, as an add-on. Its list price is $10,000. So um, that's uh, a one-time purchase uh, for it, and that's um, all you would pay for it, and then you would you would own it, regardless of whether you have an annual license or a perpetual license. If you have an annual license and you'd like to try and get an annual um, license kind of model for it, uh, we can talk about that. Uh, as of today, though, we've really only licensed it from a perpetual perspective. If you are a, a customer of the Enterprise Edition, you get this. So you would have the enterprise, uh, if you have the enterprise edition and you want um, the quality module, just call us and let us know and, and uh, we'll, we'll um, help. <laughs> and we'll, we'll get it to you, we'll get it loaded in your, uh, in your downloads if it's not there already. Uh, and if you'd like some assistance with getting it set up, um, we've got some people who know it pretty well and uh, can help with that too. Um, so that said, let's let's dive into it. And what I'm going to do first is uh, show you kind of some of the setup behind it and talk about uh, some concepts here, um, just so everybody knows. And and lots of companies, uh, our experience so far since we've been in this and uh, little history, we actually had the quality module out maybe three years ago, three and a half years ago, something along those lines. Um, when we were kind of still in the middle of doing that R&D experiment of the mobile web client. Um, so we thought as we deploy this, maybe we'll try it first in the mobile web client. And that's where we built it uh, initially. So we, we created all the business logic as we typically do in the back end. Um, but then there was uh, in the user interface existed only in the web-based um, mobile web client. And uh, as customers, you probably all know that that, that uh, R&D research project didn't really pan out to be something that uh, the majority of our customers actually wanted. So um, uh, it wasn't wasn't uh, what we had hoped it was, and wasn't what our customers hoped it was. So uh, we made the decision to really double down on uh, the desktop client and work with that. And so we started the process of taking everything that we did in the mobile client and recreating it in the desktop client. And along the way, we, we actually added some more things to it and, and uh, we think made it better. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm going to be showing today, um, that, uh, that product. But if you've seen it before and maybe even looked on the website uh, and seen videos and you said, what is that user interface? That's the mobile web client. Over the next um, couple weeks here, my intention is to redo those videos or versions of those videos. Uh, using the mobile desk or sorry using the desktop client that that you all know and use today so I will do that um, now I kind of wanted to wait till we had the newest user interface which you'll see today uh, we just made some minor tweaks to it 
um, but that's available in 4.11.2, which I will be using to demonstrate the software today. So um, as you have questions, if you want to throw them in the, uh, in the questions section, you can do that. I'll hopefully um, try and be able to answer all those today, but we can also schedule a call to have conversations if there's not so many people here on the, the call that we can't um, you know, have a, a Q&A session or a specific follow-on session with you specifically. We did just have so many that we thought for an initial overview of, of the application, it would be good to get everybody together and, and uh, see it here all at once. So that's the idea, um, but really talk to Carolyn uh, Clark and she uh, can certainly get you uh, get you and me and, and us together and, uh, and dive into more uh, specific questions, uh, how you might want to and, and hope to use the application uh, yourself. Okay, so uh, when you have the, it installed, when you have the application installed, uh, or the package installed, I should say, it's a package that you can use the, in, the, uh, the updater uh, to load in. Um, you'll actually see some more menus than you have today. So if you go up to the top level menus here and you go to the manufacturing uh, menu, you'll see yet a new option here, which is quality. And so these are the things that I'm gonna review here today, the, the specifications and the plans and the tests. So I'm gonna be going through all that. Hold on for just one second here. <laughs> okay, so I am not showing my screen. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right, um, so we'll, uh, I'll start that again. So um, <laughs> uh, if you are using the uh, module, you'll see, or you have the module installed, you see under the manufacturing uh, option here that you have a new option under the menu, which is quality. And here you'll see test specifications, plans, and quality tests. So those are new screens which we'll review today. Um, we're also going to review the workflow um, that supports that as well and, uh, and we'll talk through that too. But first I wanna talk about quality and how you can use quality without workflow and then we'll show it um, with supporting workflow. Um, and just see uh, in case you don't know or haven't installed the latest or used the latest, we, we uh, have updated the user interface uh, some over the last couple releases of the software. So we now have this shortcuts area here where you can take uh, menu options and create your own shortcuts. So if users have a limited number of uh, kind of screens that they work with on a daily basis, you can uh, create shortcuts here to get to the things that you want to see um, immediately. And so I created a database that really is all around uh, demonstrating quality. And so I put all of the, the screens that I use or the, the areas of the application that I use under shortcuts here so we can get to them uh, quickly. Uh, just a, another couple of uh, things we did uh, in the most recent release of the software come out with a, an accompanying new desktop package which has newer icons. So there's been an icon refresh um, kind of across the board. So as you go through the different desktops, you'll see um, that these icons are new, they've been updated, they're certainly more modern than the ones that we had in there before. Our own internal uh, graphic artist here, uh, Jen Hobbs, did these and she did a terrific job uh, on them. So these are the, uh, the newest um, icons that you'll see out there. You know, functionally, things are, are really still the same. What happens when you click on these is still the same, but just uh, a cleaner view and a, a nicer uh, icon as well. So uh, to start with uh, reviewing quality functionality, so uh, quality can be made up of, or a quality scenario, let's say, can be made up of a number of different, let's call them, I, don't, I hesitate to call them tests because there's so many things that you're, you're actually testing, but they could be tests, they could be measurements, um, you could be weighing something. You could be, it's where in your manufacturing process you stop and you say, well, we need to check. And here are the things that we're going to check. And here's how we're going to check them. In our system, we call those specifications. So the first thing that we're going to do is review specifications and talk about what they are or what they could be. So here's a new screen. Um, specifications, it looks like a lot of list-oriented screens that you'll see up here. You can do 
you know, filtering on different things. You can search up here uh, as well. But these are the individual checks or measurements or tests um, that you would do as you're conducting uh, a test uh, for something. I need to do one thing here quickly. Bear with me. Okay. All right. So, um, so the specifications are here, and we can uh, review each of them uh, individually by just double clicking or right clicking, as we do in lots of places in the application. Uh, so, if I open up one of these, um, you can see this one is a measurement. Uh, and what we're doing is in my demo database, which probably many of you have seen, there is uh, a toy truck manufacturing company. So in this case, we're doing, uh, or for this check here, we're doing a measurement uh, of the length of it. So I just give it a quick code. I give it a description. Um, there's a specification type. It's just a way to group them together. Uh, any test equipment that you might need for this test, you can put in there. And then you define what kind of test it's going to be. Uh, in this case, it's a numeric value, but the other options are <clears throat> you're just going to do a test and write in the results of the test. And then you can have uh, a pass fail. So these are the different options. So in the numeric value case, you know, again, this could be a weighing, it could be a measuring, it could be a um, you could bring in a, a machine that, that does some kind of spectral analysis, and then you need to put the results that you get out of that spectral analysis. Um, so what you do is you create a target, and then you create an upper level and a lower level. And if the target is a target and it has to be the target, then all of these numbers are the same. But typically there's some um, room that you've got on the upper level tolerance and lower level tolerance. So um, you put those in. Uh, you create a, a test unit of measure. Um, down below, you can put instructions here, get a ruler, and then measure. Uh, you can also have additional notes here. So that's a specification that is a numeric value. I've got another one in here that is um, just a, uh, a pass-fail type measurement. Uh, so this is the color, and we're going to match the color of the truck that I'm making. Uh, it's also a standard specification, and the test equipment is a color wheel, and the test type is just pass-fail. So in this case, we say match with appropriate color. Uh, and then the last one I have is just a, a wheel count. It's also a numeric value, but in this case, you know, we're measuring or we're counting the wheels that are needed on a, a car, so we know that there needs to be four, can't have less, don't need more, so four is it. So we've got the, the four... Uh, there and we say uh, I just said uh, ensure all four wheels are present and they spin so maybe that's the the test that you've got there so those are the different kinds of checks um, that you've got that you want to um, run against this particular truck and now we're going to get to putting together the plan what we call the plan and the plan says how am I going to take those checks those measurements and then conduct them or execute them against my products or my manufacturing process. Um, and what I did was create two different tests here. Um, one is, uh, we call it just the truck test, and that's in the manufacturing process. And the other one I created was the purchasing process uh, or a check in the purchasing, because as we'll see, there are different spots in your manufacturing flow from securing of uh, raw materials through the manufacturing process, there's different places where you can stop and make these checks or run this test, uh, conduct this test and, and define the results or report in the results. So let's look at the first one, the truck test. So you give it a name and a description. Tests can have revision numbers uh, and they can have statuses when it's active or not. They can have types, again, just ways to kind of group and categorize things together. And so, like you've seen in, in different parts of the application, we've kind of got this metaphor for here are the potential options on the left, and on the right are the ones that we select. So you can add and remove. Kind of similar metaphor over in the um, when you're setting up privileges for someone or when you're uh, making it a new item and you're copying it from another, you can pick and choose and, and uh, decide which ones you want. So 
I'm using all of the available specifications. So I, I just added them over here and said, these are the three tests or the three checks that I'm going to do uh, for this process, which is truck testing. So that's where you define what, what you're going to do. Then you define or associate that test with an item or multiple items. So you just say here, I'm going to run that test against these items. And so these are the different tests that I'm going to do it against. The red truck, uh, the S truck, which is the specialized truck, and then the B truck, which is the blue truck. So those are the different items that I'm going to assign it to. And when you do assign it, there's a little bit more behind that. So as you assign it, you define at what point in our whole entire workflow are we going to conduct this test? Where are we going to do it? So in this case, for the red truck, we've said we're gonna do it at the production uh, step, which means, and here are the different options, right? Operation, production, receipt, and shipment. So in this case, it's at production, which says at the end of the manufacturing process, right, post production, upon posting production and receiving product, whether you're receiving a partial or all of that manufacturing order, the system is at that point going to create the manufacturing or the, the quality test at the end of the manufacturing process. The other manufacturing operation or the option uh, is here under operation. So if you checked operation, and we'll, we'll actually do uh, go through examples of all of these. Um, if we select operation, then we're going to insert in the bill of operations or in the routing a step which is inspection. So you create a step which is inspection. And in that case, <clears throat> the quality test gets created as soon as the work order gets created. So uh, at the outset of the manufacturing process. And then where it actually gets conducted is in line with uh, the step in the routing. And then the other options are, I could do the test at receipt. And this is for that example that I talked about earlier, which is against a purchased item. So if you've got a series of tests that you do against uh, critical raw material as it's getting received or ingredients uh, as they're getting received, um, you can conduct those tests and record them. Uh, and that test will get uh, created as soon as you receive the item in. And then the final option is to conduct the test at shipping. So you're familiar with the product, you know that there's really kind of a two-phase process for conducting uh, or for shipping a product, right? There's the issuing to shipping uh, and then the shipping. So the issuing to shipping is where we're confirming here are the products that I'm going to ship or that I intend to ship. And that's when we create uh, the test in that case. So I actually don't have an example set for that one, but. I'm sure you can kind of, you'll be able to use your imagination pretty well. And, you know, if that's your workflow and we need to show it to you, um, we, we can do that. But uh, the idea here is that we'll just do the, um, the first three, actually, we'll show you. And really, we'll, we'll focus on the first two, which is really manufacturing oriented. So that's where we say where in the process um, something gets assigned. Oh, sorry another uh, little thing here and then down the bottom we say what is the frequency with which we are going to conduct these tests so if you are uh, an organization that currently does uh, quality you're probably familiar with these terms so I can uh, conduct the test on all I can do a first item I can do a last item uh, I can do a sample so a sample would say uh, I need to <clears throat> um, so see if I did a, a sample, it could say after how many, uh, what's the frequency with the sample? Um, you can do that. So you, it's a little bit random, but you can say, you know, every 10, I want to uh, conduct a test in the system for a batch of 100, say, we'll conduct, we'll create 10 tests. <clears throat> uh, the next is a lot option, which says for every lot that I create, I'm going to create a test. And then the last option is serial, which means I need a test for every single item that I manufacture. If you're manufacturing large machines, that's, you know, I, that would make sense. Uh, if you're manufacturing, you know, a hundred small things that potentially are serialized in a batch or a hundred thousand small things that's 
a lot, but you do need uh, a variation of a test for every one because you do need to have, um, or perhaps you want to have, you know, uh, something that says how many or, or what are the specific results of a specific test uh, for each uh, and every item. So those are the, the different options that are there. I've got this set to all. Um, and that's really it uh, for the setup of the plan. You can have comments in here and it will tell you when you created that and if you've made any revision changes. Um, their document tab is there. As we see, it's in lots of places throughout the application. So if maybe one of your vendors or customers uh, sent you the, a series of tests that they expect you to do and they uh, send it in a spreadsheet or they send it in a PDF or something like that, you can attach it to uh, this test here. Okay, so uh, that's the setup. It's the setting up or creating of the specifications and the creating of the plans. And then the uh, tests are the result of uh, what happens there. So let's, uh, we're, we're just gonna do this portion. Then we're gonna do a couple of tests. Then I'm gonna show you, or we'll maybe go through one and then we'll, step back and show you the setup of workflow, which is kind of an accompanying uh, set of functionality around, uh, around the quality test. So let's go to um, work order schedule and we'll create a work order for that red truck, okay? So I'm going to create a new work order here and uh, you notice there are some uh, small UI changes that go along with the, um, the new icons around the desktop, the little icons like the magnifying glass are, are new and the calendars are new. So just some slight changes that you might notice. Um, but here we'll, we'll uh, choose the item that we're going to do the test on. So we're gonna say we'll manufacture a couple of these items and we'll say let's, uh, make 30 of these red trucks and we'll say they're due in a week. So I'm going to say plus seven. Okay, so now we've created the work order and we'll save this work order. And so we've got the work order that I we just created here, which is, um, yeah which is this one, 10198. That's the new work order that we just created. So I'm gonna move that aside for just a second. Let's look at quality tests. If we hit the query button here, here are the, the tests. The, um, those are some tests that I, that I did in the past, uh, but there are no new tests here. So um, we can filter on lots of things here. I can see test status, I can filter on dates, reason codes, if we wanna go back uh, from a reporting perspective. Uh, but if I just looked at test status and said, show me the open test, which is what the default is here, uh, we can see that there's nothing, uh, nothing there right now. Okay, so let's go and start to receive uh, some items or start to receive some, uh, some production. We'll finish uh, some of those items. So we'll go ahead and release this uh, order and we'll open it up and let's post production because remember I had the red one set to, it's gonna create the test once I receive uh, some finished product here. So I'm gonna hit post production and I'll tell the system of the 30, let's say we received 10 so far. And so I'm gonna hit post. And remember that this, uh, you might not remember, but uh, one of my raw materials is a lot tracked item. So uh, it's asking what paint uh, I used. I'll select that, okay. So now we see that we have received 10, so we ordered uh, 20 here and we received 10 uh, underneath. Okay, so now if we bring back that quality test screen and we look now for open tests, we see we've got a new test. Uh, this, we've got the test for that red truck. 
So we can see here, this is the test number 10024, the start date of today, the work order number, it's the one we just created, which is 10198, uh, and this test is open. So we can look at this test by double clicking and, and uh, opening it up. Um, we could also print that test here. If we wanted to do that right from here, we can say print this test. And we can get a copy of what the test, if we wanted it uh, in paper form, would look like. So uh, here's what it is. It tells us we need to measure and we need a color match and we need a wheel count. And we see the uh, there's a place for results and notes. And you know this is a form like any other form, so you can make changes to it. You can uh, tweak it for your requirements. It's got the logo uh, in here, so you can put your own logo in here, uh, and it's got the test number here. Uh, this is not a lot serialized item, so we're not testing against uh, a lot serial number. You can see that there's a place for that. Okay. So if we wanted to do this test, conduct this test online, we can right from here. So we can right click and, oops, no, I didn't want to do that. If I right click, I can open this test and I can start to report against it. So the three tests, uh, three specific measurements that we're going to do here are the wheel count, uh, the length measure and the color match. So we'll, uh, to do, I can highlight one and, and uh, hit the open button or I can just double click on one and open it up and here's what we're testing or measuring. So um, the standard uh, test, it's a numeric value. Our target is four. The instructions say uh, count the wheels, make sure they're all present and they spin. We say, yes, that works. And we say, uh, you know, we can put notes in here or not. Wheels work terrific. Terrifically. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll uh, hit save. So just as a result of entering that number here, that test uh, passed, right? Um, so the next one comes up and it's the measuring length. So we can open up that one as well. And we can see the target is 11 and we follow the instructions, which say get a ruler and then measure. So we go ahead and measure and we say that this one turn, turns out to be 13.5. And we save that one. And that failed, because we remember we had set the upper and lower level tolerances, and that was above the upper level tolerance. So something else happened once we did that, which is uh, the test itself failed. If any measurement or any of the components, that, any of the specifications that we're testing against uh, fail to or fail, then the whole test fails. Um, we can still conduct the last one here. And we'll say uh, the color was good, great coloring. And for that case, because it's pass fail, it's going to ask you to tell it whether it passes or fails. Nice color job. So we'll save that. Okay. So now, as a result, um, we've got uh, this this failed. So that could be the end of it. Um, and you could say that's uh, that's what we get, uh, didn't pass, it's not the right fit. Um, and if that's all you wanted to you say, okay, we're gonna save that one. Uh, and then we'll say, hey, show me all my failed uh, tests. And it could be that at that time you wanna, you wanna print it off. Uh, but here, since it failed, we can say um, a couple of things. We can print the summary of, of uh, what we just saw, or we can do uh, a non-conformance certificate on that one. So here we can say non-conformance, here's what happened, we had the wheel count, here were the results, uh, this failed, uh, here's what happened, and now it's it's in quarantine. Um, so that can just be, you know, we move it to someplace else, uh, we move it out of uh, inventory at this point, but it's, it's kind of a, a less automated, less uh, prompted, uh, approach, but it's a simple approach. You create the test, you print the test, and then you decide what the disposition is of those products as they come off the line. Uh, and then you can have, you know, things to pass or things to fail. And, and we'll do a, another small batch here and, and see something that passes. Or maybe we'll do the rest of them. So we'll get out of here. 
And so come back to the work order and we'll finish this work order. So we'll say, okay, let's post production for the final count here, which is 20. And we're gonna back flush materials. We're gonna back flush operations and we'll go ahead and post. Um, one thing that you have the ability to do here, this is another um, kind of thing if you wanted to uh, make this a little more um, manual, everything, perhaps everything that comes off of the manufacturing uh, immediately goes into quarantine. So you can actually set up a quarantine warehouse here and say, when I receive it, I want it to go into quarantine. Somebody else is going to deal with it from there. So you, you've got the ability to do that when you are um, receiving something. But we're not going to do that. I just wanted to present it as, a, as an option. So we'll say post, and again, it's asking for the lot of paint that we pulled from. Okay, so uh, now what we've got is a, a scenario where we're gonna create another test here, or we have created another test. So if we go to test, See, we got a, a test number for 10025, again, for today. If we wanted to uh, open that up, we can uh, print the test itself. We can see what we need to do here, which is uh, measure uh, for that test for this work order here uh, for the, the test and the test number. Uh, so in this case, we'll we'll do the same thing that we did, but we'll we'll let everything uh, pass, right? So we'll go ahead and do the wheel count here. That's four. That's great. We'll do the length. This one is we'll call it 1.25, and we'll say save, and that passes. And then we'll do the color match, and we'll see uh, beauty. Nicely done. So we'll save that. And so as a result here, everything passes. Oops, I didn't put uh, pass. You have to say whether it passes or fails here. So then I save it. And that's the trigger. When all three pass, uh, then the test status uh, says pass there. So when we save this, now if we want to look at uh, tests that have passed, we can look at our test that we just ran, which is the 10025 here. And we right click on it and the options are a little different. Remember the options before were print test, works order summary, and non-conformance certificate. In this case, because it passed, uh, we can print a quality certificate. So maybe one of your customers is asking for uh, a, a C of C, a certificate of compliance, or a C of A, a certificate of analysis, or a quality certificate. Um, so you can create this uh, form, and it's much like the, the non-conformance one that we saw. So if we print that, you can see here, here's our certificate of compliance. So you can put your own uh, logo in there, just like we did before. Certificate of compliance. We can see these are the tests that we ran, and, and maybe somebody needs to sign it, uh, or the customer likes to see that, or it gets stamped, or something like that. So it looks uh, official. And customers feel comfortable that you've done the test, conducted the test, and you are in compliance with what they have asked you to do. So that's that process. That is um, kind of going through and, and uh, doing it without, uh, without the workflow component, but a, a simpler way to, uh, to approach it, or maybe the, the first level um, that, that we can do. Okay, so now we're going to talk about another feature that, that uh, is coming in the application, and the first iteration of it really is uh, here with the quality. Um, you'll see it in some other um, areas of the application in subsequent releases, uh, but right now it's, it's really only active in the, uh, in the quality area. So uh, we'll talk about that. And if you are on a version of uh, 4.10.1 and later, you'll see some of this uh, here. But it's but it's all been enabled uh, with this uh, latest release of the software. Really, 4.11.1 is when all of the features of uh, of the quality were were uh, complete. It's 4.11.2 that also brought in some some of this new user interface stuff. 
Okay, so what you see here, some of the new uh, setup options under the system uh, setup here, uh, is you've got workflow here where you define um, the workflow. You also see workflow profiles, and what work, I don't have any set up, but what workflow, workflow profiles do are similar to, functionally, it, they are similar to what EDI profiles do for pushing out documents to trading partners. So you can, you can kind of define who, uh, who would get it and what you want in an email, what you would want that messaging to say, hey, you've got these tests to run or you've got this test to run, um, so here's uh, what you get. Or it can uh, be sent as a, uh, something to print to somebody. So that's what the, the profiles are. So, but let's look at, uh, oh, and you do have to go into, uh, up under the top here, under workflow activation and just check create workflow from the desktop client. Okay, so uh, if we go into workflow and we look at the different options here, um, we look at the steps that are defined for quality. And these today are hard coded. Uh, so they're not something you can say, well, that's not what our process is. Well, that's okay, um, but it's just, you know, these are what comes with the application. If you wanted to do something different, uh, it, it really would be a, it would be writing something uh, for you. It would be a, a scripting exercise, but, but uh, it, it would be writing something. So hopefully we can work within uh, what we've provided here for, uh, for what we've got for workflow for uh, quality. So when you define it, you create the steps in uh, kind of in the process. So we we already reviewed the you know the testing uh, part of it, but here we're re reviewing really kind of okay. Well, who does what part of those tests, and who takes what actions uh, and when? So we're not just uh, black and white, the test or no test, pass or fail, there's there's some other steps in here. So that's really what workflow is all about. Um, so uh, today it's it's only in quality, but you will see some of this workflow capability in manufacturing, uh, in inventory, projects, uh, purchasing and sales. So we're working on some of that that you'll see. <clears throat> you define uh, a quality uh, kind of process here. So I've created one called uh, truck. Uh, and given it, you know, what the first step uh, in this process is we test the item. So we're testing uh, for quality and we give that a, a name. Each step in this workflow can be assigned to an individual uh, or a different individual. It could all be assigned to the same person, um, but this is how it works is that you assign uh, a step in the process to an individual. And that individual would then see kind of their tasks under what we call workflow activities, and we'll, we'll see that uh, in just a little bit. Um, and then you can have the, this profile here, which says, you know, how do I want them notified? So they'll see what their tasks are in a list, but you can also push out um, notifications as well through those, uh, those profiles. So, and then you start uh, this with, uh, you, you say it's in process. So the steps are, um, first, we test the item. Once it's tested, if it passes, it can be released. If it doesn't pass, it goes into quarantine. Um, the other options are, once it's in quarantine, what are we going to do with it? What actions are we going to take? Are we going to rework it? Or are we going to scrap it? Or maybe we put it into quarantine and we did some initial or some additional testing. Maybe there's kind of a first phase of we, we need to do one uh, test, but then maybe the testing manager comes in and says, okay, well, let's make sure and I'll do the test and then we can release uh, from there. Or we say, no, this actually has to go back to manufacturing for some rework uh, or no, this is a disaster. We're, we're just going to have to scrap it. So these are the different actions um, that are available uh, in the workflow quality. So we test uh, and then we, we have uh, those other options. So down below, what we do is we um, kind of like we did uh, when we were creating the, the, the specifications and saying which ones are applicable, um, we define what are the options uh, for a positive, 
and a negative result of each step in the workflow, okay? So this first step, which is we test the item, the positive uh, result, which we say is, is it would be complete, uh, would mean that we release it. So over here on the left are all of the potential options that we defined up at the top, right? So uh, uh, if it's positive, then we're going to release it. If it's negative, we use the deferred uh, option and we say, okay, of the, the available actions, what happens if it's deferred? And how I've defined it is if it's, if it's positive, we release it. If it's negative, it's going into quarantine. So that's the, that's the process there. So then the next step is uh, you have to define what happens um, when something gets released, and that's just a, a step. It's just once it gets released, uh, it, it's done. So that's, that means it's a, been a successful test, and you might need somebody to get uh, alerted so when something gets released from testing that they can come over and get it. Uh, and bring it over to shipping uh, or bring it over to uh, packaging or whatever has to happen uh, in that step. So that's the release step. The quarantine step is the one I defined as what happens uh, in the bad case. So it's, it's a negative. We didn't get the results that we wanted from the first round of testing, so it goes into quarantine. So in quarantine, the options are upon completion, which means, again, a positive result, I did the extra test and found everything's fine, so we're going to release it. And then the negative is, yeah, that we're going to have to do something else with this, so we're going to send it back to manufacturing for uh, rework. Or maybe in your operation, if you do that kind of second review and you say it's really not going to work, uh, you might go right to scrap. So kind of your option as to what your uh, definition is or what your flow is, but these are the ones that are available. Okay, and then rework here, uh, same kind of scenario, and we'll, we'll see there's different actions at uh, each step, we'll see that, but this is, I'm just kind of defining what the workflow is at this point. Um, so at the, the workflow, the, on the positive, maybe we did a rework and it came out great, so the positive result here is we can release it. Uh, and then the negative is, yeah, it's just not going to work. We're going to have to scrap it. And then the, the last option is to scrap it. And that's just a, a final disposition that, again, uh, maybe somebody needs to get a notification for, hey, we've got all of this material that needs to get scrapped. That's your job. You know, why don't, why don't you go ahead and do that? So those are the, the kind of things that are or the steps in the manufacturing process here. So let's do similar to what we did before let's do um, a work order and we'll we'll now also uh, enhance the the kind of quality workflow here with using workflow so we'll go back to the work order schedule we'll create another work order for that red truck this time we'll just order uh, order 10. So we'll save this one. And so this is work order 10199. So we'll release that and we'll open this one up. Okay. So uh, like we did before, we're going to receive a partial uh, for this one. Didn't mean to do that. So we'll post production and we'll say we'll receive five of these. And we'll go ahead and post. Okay, so we've received five. And now if we go to the tests, we'll have a new test in there, which is 10026 uh, for that red truck, right? So that's what happened on the quality test. Now, another new screen that's out there is the work order activities. You can get to that by navigating system, workflow activities. So that's where this one resides. If you're going to use it, uh, I'd suggest putting a, a, a shortcut here. So 
Uh, if we bring up workflow activities, we can see that we've got, uh, I actually had uh, two things that happened as a result of the previous tests, right? So let, let's actually get rid of those. As we finished with those. And I didn't do anything with workflow. So with this one, um, we've got the, the new test here. So this is the screen. And again, um, remember that we said each of those different actions, uh, new test, um, quarantine, rework, and scrap can all be owned by an individual. So as things go into those different steps, they can go into those person's workflow activities and they can get notifications via email that they've got that work, that they've got um, actions uh, that they need to go to and go into the workflow here. Uh, because it's me and my own database, I had everything assigned to me. So everything is going to show up uh, just for me. So um, once I, I see that I've got a test, or I could have multiple, and you can filter on these, right? So I can look uh, by module, I can look by status, I can say who it's owned to, I can see it completed. So you've got lots of filtering up there. Um, but now I've got the ability to, once I see this, to double click on it or right click. Uh, if I right click, I can edit the activity and go into just uh, this one activity here, which is the uh, the the test itself, and I can tell uh, the system that I've completed it, or I can actually go into the test. So if I double click on this, it opens up that test that we saw before, right? So same thing, uh, the test is open and I've got that same uh, issue with wheel count and measuring and color match. So let's do what we did before. So the wheels are fine. The length, let's say is great, uh, but the color is, bad coloring and so we're going to fail that one color way off so we'll say that one failed and as a result as we saw before of one uh one of the components failing everything fails so let's save this and now if we go back to workflow activities my workflow that i've got here or my action that I've got here has moved on from release to quarantine. So it moved it automatically because it failed into quarantine. Um, if I had passed this test, it would have gone to the release, uh, release step. So uh, now I'm in quarantine and uh, I've got a couple of things here. I can edit this activity or I can delete this activity. Uh, if I just double click on it, I also have the ability to move the inventory. So now if it's going into quarantine, maybe what I really want to do is get it out of visible inventory so my sales guys don't go and sell it just because I've finished it. So I actually have the ability to move it uh, into the quarantine warehouse right from here. So right from that workflow, if I double click on it, it gives me that ability to make that move um, right there and right now. So just wanted to show that that, that um, is available. So, but in this case, um, what we're going to do is we're going to then make the decision. So maybe we we looked at it and we uh, made it, you know, the manager came in and had a second look and said, or the quality manager said, yeah, I think we ought to send this to rework. So what we're going to say is, remember, we had completed was the positive and we had uh, deferred was the negative. So we're going to say, yeah, this one, we're going to defer it. It's It needs more work. So we're going to hit deferred here. We're going to say on the comment here, we'll say uh, needs color work. Send back to MFG paint. So we'll save that. So um, as a result now, it's shown up in the rework. So again, different people might have different responsibilities for the results that happen in the quality test. I might just be responsible for rework. So I've got my workflow activity window or I've gotten an email that said, hey, you've got something to do here in the rework area. So I could open up my workflow activities. Uh, I could right click on it. I can see the activity or I can also double click on it. And what this does now is add 
to the work order. It's going to it's going to add a rework operational step to the routing um, to go back and do some work. So you have to set up this uh, standard operation, which is rework. It's an operation type, which is rework here. And you might know at this point what you think it's going to take here. It could be a standard operation. You could say, I know it's going to take me five minutes and 10 minutes, or you know, you could make the, the changes here and you could say, well, actually, I think it's going to take me 15 minutes here. Uh, rework adjustments to get truck backed into, into compliance, send back to paint station, repaint. So the default work center is the rework station, but since we know this one's gonna be paint, we can actually change that and say, we need to do uh, more paint here. And so we'll, we'll uh, save that. So that's what we're doing at the work, uh, at, the, at the workflow activities, right? And now if we go to the work order schedule, and we bring up that work order, which is this one here, right, that we just did. Um, the, the typical um, uh, operations here would have been paint, assemble, and then package. But now we've got a rework step here, right, where we are also doing paint. So um, I've done all of the others. Now I'm just going to go into this one operation here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, uh, post this operation, but we're not doing it for all 10. Remember, we're just doing it for the five um, that we received here. And uh, and so we can say, you know, if we had to override this and say, actually, it took us, uh, you know, 15 minutes here for this, and you can change the setup time. And, you know, it was me that did that, you know, and this is Wally. I did that too. So we can post that. Um, if we needed to issue more material, we could do that here as well. So I could say uh, issue new material and I could I could say we need some more, uh, what color paint did we use here? Red paint. So we'll say we used a fixed quantity of uh, red paint to, to fix this and we'll use uh, you know one gallon overall to, to do that. We'll say we did it at the rework step and we'll save that and we'll issue that material too actually so let's do that so what we get to do here is add in the real cost to reworking right so we can add in the labor via the rework uh, operation we can add in any additional materials that we need to do here so and this is going to now show up uh, in variances right so we're going to see that there was a variance here for uh, for you know this this kind of rework in this manufacturing operation um, so we let's say that we uh, then were able to fix that so it all looks good now so we can go into the rework uh, option and we can say let's edit this and we can say yeah we completed this so that worked so we'll say yay uh, and that that uh, was that's uh, now released out of there and we can go into that test actually we'll we'll do need to go into that test and say that it um, that it passed or where it failed. So we can say uh, management, or we can go in and, and make any comments here. So we're gonna say um, uh, we released it and it passed, and we can put comments in here, or we can put a note in here that said, after repaint, all looks great. And we'll give this a pass too. We can save that. Okay, and so now as a result, that test has passed, right? So now we can do a, uh, a quality certificate for that one. And we can see <laughs> if we want to have those in here, um, you know, the way that it I think works out of the gate is that any, any um, uh, comments are gonna stay, but you know, you've got the ability to make changes if you want to that form, maybe you don't want those. 
to come in or we could have gone in and, and uh, edited those. So, so you see that's uh, there and what we can do with that. Um, so then the other thing that you could, we could have done along the way is uh, we'll receive this uh, last one here and we'll post production for the final five. Now we'll go into the workflow activities for this one. This is in process. And we can do the same thing. We can say that we, you know, actually, let's just say we got five of these. This one's fine. This one, fine. Passes. But the test fails. And so we can go into quarantine. We saw that routine before. I just kind of want to do the, the last step here. Um, so um, we're going to say we're going to defer out of quarantine again. It's going to go into rework. Uh, we can go into rework and, and do what we did before. But I'm just going to uh, kind of go through that process and go to rework doesn't go well. Then it goes to scrap. And so it's right from here that we can scrap uh, some of these. So we'll say this last group, um, we had to scrap five of those red trucks. So right from here, we can do that scrap transaction and, and uh, kind of follow that all the way through. So that's the idea of how things work with, uh, with the, the workflow, um, kind of backing up the, the quality plan. So it's a little bit more with the quality plan. So you've got, the basic quality plan itself, and you can just use that. Uh, if you want to use workflow so that you can assign different tasks to people, we've got those tasks um, kind of predefined and assigned, and you can go through and and uh, and and uh, chip them, chip away at those. So that's really the what's there uh, in quality. I'm happy to um, take a couple of questions if you have questions. Uh, now, uh, if you want to think about it and, and uh, talk to us and schedule, you know, a follow on specifically so that we can talk about your environment and what you might want and what you might need. Um, happy to uh, to do that. So it looks like I do see uh, some questions. Uh, people telling us we didn't see my screen. So sorry that. Not seeing your screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there was a question from uh, Marco saying, does the update show in comments? So if we wanted to look at uh, any of those tests, um, you've got the ability to look at um, oh, one thing that I didn't show here was the work order summary. So in this case, we can actually see um, every the two different tests that we had. Remember, we we uh, for that last one that we did, we did uh, two different tests, uh, and here's what were the results of that work order. The different tests that were spawned out of that. Uh, for this test, I think we can see. look at actually let's see so you can see kind of the the history of things here so i can see uh what happened with this last one that we did here uh where we did the quality then it went to quarantine then it went to rework and then we we scrapped it um, so uh, what you see on the forms is really kind of up to you. You do have the ability to tailor those. But I think what maybe Marco is saying is, uh, or asking is, can you see uh, what happens there? So um, here's what you see on the comments of those, which is test uh, failed. And so here's here's what you can what it records in the the change log I guess maybe is is uh, what you're asking. Uh, okay. 
Okay. So um, David asks, is it 21 CFR part 11 compliant? So it's a new product for us. So we haven't worked with uh, a customer that is governed by 21 CFR part 11. So we didn't necessarily design it um, with uh, you know, a, a, an FDA auditor or a firm um, that does FDA, consult, FDA auditing consulting. Uh, we designed it based on some uh, requirements that we got from some of our customers. So um, honestly, we would want and need some help from some of our customers who are governed by that and who need to be uh, to tell us. Uh, if if uh, it it can help them with that, um, so what it does do is I think um, what it does do is uh, or the system itself does all of the lot tracking and tracing that you need to do. Um, I don't know the 21 CFR Part 11 stuff that re that uh, revolves specifically around quality and quality testing, so I can't really answer that question. Okay, so Marco wanted to know the one that went from fail to pass. Which one was that? Yeah, so you do see here uh, pass, pass, fail, and then you see uh, set to fail and then set to, to pass, pass. So um, you might want uh, additional detail uh, and maybe there's more detail that, that, you, that you might want for changes like that. Again, kind of let us know and tell us what you might need for your uh, quality scenario. And it could be that we could certainly pull it out because it's being captured. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I can just show you really how it works today. and. And uh, we're happy to, to kind of talk um, as you have questions. Okay. Um, does quarantine have to be another warehouse? Quarantine does not have to be another warehouse. It can be a location in a warehouse if you don't want to go through the process of having or, or the, the issues uh, that you might have or the overhead of setting up an additional warehouse. Um, right now, that, that function. Uh, when you're in quarantine, that that uh, when you double click and brings up that screen, uh, I'm sure that that could be modified to location move. So you can move it from, uh, or you could do that same kind of single transaction, uh, moving it from one location to another. I mean, you don't have to have that double click function there to do that anyway, right? I mean, you could still go up and and uh, Find and do that inventory transaction, which is, you know, inventory moves, uh, you know, um, relocate inventory. So it could be this screen uh, that, that pops up instead, or that could be, you know, a little shortcut that you have here kind of out of the box. All right. Is it possible to get a recording of this webinar? Yes. Uh, we're going to put it up. We are recording. Um, we'll schedule a follow-on meeting. Thanks, Dave says. Ignore the fail pass question. Okay. Use non-edible locations for quarantine. I think that we can still uh, deal with that. Uh, we want to see the total quantity on hand as well as only the netable. So I think that um, you know, there are uh, inquiries that will show you nettable and non-nettable, so that that might be um, the way to do it. So, um, we'll talk to Mike about that, Marco. We can. Uh, I've done a lot of work with Mike on that as we're um, learning this as we got it kind of out of uh, the lab and into the field here. We've been uh, working together on it, so we can see how it uh, would work for you guys. All right, so uh, doesn't look like there are any other questions, um, but again, happy to, to do some follow on stuff, answer questions if you'd like. Thank you all for, for uh, participating today, and uh, if we can help, 
uh, let us know and please absolutely give us feedback. We, we really like the feedback. Thanks so much.